we're going to cover research, particularly in business. You should know that you will continue to do research well beyond college. So it's a good idea to start developing healthy habits now. Business, re business researchers need solid data and analysis to make good decisions. They're not always the best. Information gaps constantly exist. We have to cope with that living in a world where information can be fragmented and challenging. But the best we could do is develop good, healthy habits to present data that business decision makers can use, particularly those that will be going into a business analytics of, type, of, of any type. This quote from Einstein is important to me. If I had an hour to solve a problem, I'd spend 55 minutes thinking about the problem and five minutes thinking about the solutions. What he's saying here is that problem identification is the most important uh, thing you can do in research. Oftentimes people will dive into situations thinking they can provide solutions, but really don't know what problem they're trying to solve. Because they never ask, and, and that leads their questions to be more indirect or misguided. Good example. If I see somebody who's bleeding, and I say, oh, the problem is they're bleeding, I put a bandage on them. But then they're still bleeding. It may be because they actually have a bullet in there. And so I may have thought I have solved the problem, but the reality is there was a deeper problem I did not know, and the bandage itself wasn't going to solve it. So identifying the source or underlying problem is essential in all research. When conducting research, you want to be you want to look at reports for businesses. There's two main types. They there are analytical reports where you're trying to make a decision or suggest a decision by providing data and analysis that decision makers could use. Um, but there's informational reports that. Uh, non-decision makers and decision makers alike need to just know so they could you know be more aware of certain problems but when you're trying to create any of these reports it's I think you should just know that they need to be true and factual concise and brief and um, uh, with with uh, with only the most necessary facts possible the salient point matters here your research process is about pretty much seven steps. I added one compared to the textbook. My one and most important one that starts with is problem identification and problem statement. It's really understanding what is going on. In some cases, you may have to do extra research on your own to understand the true nature of a problem. In business and in science and academia, this happens more than you think. Asking a question. Well, now that you have identified the problem statement, what are the questions that you are trying to ask that you want to solve? And then so, uh, search existing knowledge to create a good baseline to help you develop your research plan. And then you can conduct your research and analyze data and present findings. We'll go into more details as we go along. Data has two types. You have quantitative data and qualitative data. Quantitative data will be any data that has numbers, um, like if you do a survey, how, uh, um, rank how you feel, one to five, five being the best, that would be quantitative data. Qualitative data would be an open-ended question, how do you feel with no baseline numbers at all? You just, it's your, your um, in-depth analysis that goes beyond just the numbers. There's primary research and secondary research. Uh, many of you might be coming across this for the um, um, second, third, fourth time, and others this might be a, a new thing. But keep in mind that primary research is anything that you've created on your own. There are the interviews, the surveys, the observations, and the analysis. Methodology, nuanced methodology becomes more important here because we want to know that you sample the population correctly. We want to know that you didn't have bi inherent biases in your questions. We want to know that um, there are data equivalencies where you try to um, um, capture internal bias in the research and equivocate that to your research questions. So primary research methodology becomes is, is important in understanding how to develop these. 
This is why, for example, when you look at weather data and you see all these lines about where a storm might be headed, those are different research points. And you don't combine them to give you an average point. You get a range point. And, that's okay. and that you have to be careful with even in itself. So combining uh, research like that and weather is, is risky. In secondary research, we're looking at things that already exist. Books, journals, newspaper articles, your library research becomes your best friend. And uh, your company usually has database within its own system and servers. They also have um, uh, research access to tools, you know, depending on the size of the company, that you could also use in your research. But at Santa Ana College and every college, we have different library sources, and I highly recommend using them. Learning how to develop research phrases to go into the library EBSCOhost and finding different abstract articles that you can read from. Peer-reviewed versus non-peer-reviewed. Peer-reviewed means other uh, academics have seen this article and, and our research and has challenged it and it's held its weight. It's a good article. It's a good, it's good research. Um, published and not, uh, is not the same as peer-reviewed in some cases, so keep that in mind. Use the library source. They're available to answer your questions. They're a great team. Highly recommend it when you get stuck on certain research. When um, they also provide uh, workshops, you know, they, how do you find an article uh, online? Great tool if this is new to you. There, you have to be, you have to be, you know, pretty savvy in what words would work. Strategies for online searching. But more for me, I think is important. I recommend doing, is it legit? Finding out what other information around you is verifiable. Is it true? You know, uh, we live in a world where misinformation is constant. And to fill that gap, you need to just realize that what you read or the first thing you read may not be true. Even if it comes from, um, um, you know, certain respected sources. But, you know, uh, even Twitter, you know, you can find good information on Twitter, but you just need to be aware that the sources, what is the agenda behind it, where is it coming from, who's speaking, who's the authority, all sorts of questions come to mind. And this workshop will help you become a better researcher, but also more well-rounded in what's going on in the real world. Tools to help you. We have Microsoft Excel and Microsoft Access. Microsoft Office tools are really helpful. Excel would be great for storing and organizing data, but more importantly, helping you analyze data. Access is a better source in collecting massive amounts of data through um, where you could create actual isolations of data much more easily. So Access and Excel are your, your best friends. You could also use Google Sheets, which is similar and free, but at Santa Ana College and many colleges, um, it's starting to offer Office 365 for free, so please use it as needed. Another helpful tool that I used in college was CTAV. Nowadays, it costs money. The limited option gives you fewer um, ways to organize and store data. But Zotero is similar to CTAV, and it's free, or it should be free. But these are just sources you can use that helped me with my research. It will help you categorize any data you collect. And um, uh, whether you want it to be a quote, uh, a paraphrase, or a citation, or whatever have you, it'll collect it with the information you input it and help you organize it based on the references page that you need. Most business people use APA. It's internationally recognized. Few use MLA and Chicago. So get used to APA. It's my recommendation. But what they can do with your research, once you collect a lot of data, uh, you want to be able to focus on your writing and you're focusing on what you're, the message you're trying to give. They can actually integrate with Microsoft Word through a macros. And in that, you could just, by a click of a button, insert quotations, gives you the in-text uh, in citation, and will add it to the references page on the back end for you with no problems. I highly recommend using this on any research that, is, that will require multiple sources or lots of data. When finding secondary sources, you have to look at your questions. It's good and it, I recommend being open-minded to some of the questions, being a little broad. As you research, you'll become more and more narrow into your defined questions and what you're researching based on your knowledge base. Um, 
when it comes to Google, you know, check the library when it comes to library searches, ask them, use one of those workshops to help you. But with Google, you could use um, quotations, insert the word and to help you isolate information and research more clearly. When you're using databases, uh, it is important uh, to know the, the uh, um, work if it's scholarly or not, as I mentioned before. When evaluating sources, I recommend that workshop, but you could also know if it's a .org or .com. Um, .orgs are typically nonprofit. Uh, just be careful, even think tanks. I think think tanks are amazing. Uh, there's, there's a think tank in almost every field of knowledge. Uh, but like Cato Institute and Heritage Institute, they're great think tanks. Great research comes out of there, but they are agenda driven. They're, they're a more conservative research source. So understand the limitations of their research as you uh, of a think tank when it comes to your own research, but definitely use them. Uh, they provide the crap analysis when identifying sources. How current is it? Some research that's old is still relevant, so don't underscore it. But more relevant, the better, especially if the information topical is got a relevancy question, like it needs to be current. Reliability, um, is it, how is it presented? You know, uh, is it got a good methodology? The authority, who's the uh, source? Like, is it somebody we can trust? And if you were having a question of that, can you judge it against other sources and see that they are, there's some consistency here? And that is, does this purpose uh, have a purpose? Does it reach your research goal or their research goal? There are three ways to synth synthesize sources. First is quoting. You use quotation marks, paraphrasing, which is requires style, but it's not usually just quoting. You're kind of using their source as a way to, through your perspective slightly. So be careful. Paraphrasing is a, is a style. It's hard to explain. Summarizing is just an overall idea of what you found in that, that piece of data. But you still need to create in-text citation for these, these methods. Ethics. I want to spend a minute on ethics. You need to develop it professional integrity. Over time, these habits will help you establish credibility and trust. If you do not, if you do not create healthy habits, you can you will lose credibility and potentially your job or be face criminal li liability. And research is so important that the data you collect and how you handle data is important in business. For example, when Wells Fargo started creating fake accounts out of customers that existed and not existed, or how um, data uh, uh, Facebook uses personal data for their polit for political gains at one time. So just know what these ulterior methods are should, there, should they exist. Um, some tips on plagiarism. Uh, if, you, if you think it's somebody else's idea, then it's somebody else's. Pretty simple. And add that uh, quotation properly or add, uh, um, cite the, the sources properly. And Allow enough time to build reports should it require extra in-depth analysis. If you're not sure who the author is, look for other sources that might help articulate that idea. I will spend the rest of the time on bias. Um, bias is inherent, and I agree with this textbook on that, that it's normal and a part of human inter life and interactions. It comes from our upbringings, our experiences, and our perspectives. You're going to want to recognize your own biases that come from your research. Some people get so bought into their research that, that, you know, when you're asking a research question, you're trying to, in science, you're trying to prove it wrong before you prove it right. Some get so vivid um, bias that they don't want other research or they don't want any other ideas because they're looking to justify the question they've created. So when it comes to looking at research, it is as humbling and powerful to recognize your own bias in your own research. And it's helpful when it comes to looking at other markets and other uh, areas of, of, of cultures when you're doing research in marketing and working internationally. So I recommend recognizing uh, coming to terms with your own biases in your research. 